Good morning children. Today in this video we will see some important questions from the topic excretion. So in the first part of the video we have seen questions from 1 to 7. So in this second part now we are discussing 7 to 14 questions. If you have not seen the first part please click the link given in the description see the first part. And if you want to see the full lesson explanation of excretion you can find the link in the description even in the end screens. So now we are starting the second part of this excretion. Here we have the eighth question. Let us see. What is the length of human ureters? What is the length of human ureters? So what is a ureter? Ureter is a tube that connects the kidneys to urinary bladder. It is a part of the excretory system. Whatever the urine is formed in the kidney, the urine has to be passed to the urinary bladder and it is stored temporarily before excretion. So the urine is carried from urinary uh, kidneys to urinary bladder via the ureters. So they are the thin muscular tubes. How are they? Thin and muscular. So they have muscles in which the urine flows. The urine it do not flow as per the gravity. It will not just fall down in the tube. So it is passed in the tube. The tube it passes the urine. How it passes the urine? It is just like how the food is passed in the esophagus. We studied that in the lesson nutrition. The food is passed in the esophagus by special movements, special contraction and relaxations. It has got a special name. You know what is that? Yes, peristalsis. That is with the help of peristaltic movements the food is passed in the esophagus. In the same way the urine is also passed in the ureters by peristaltic movements. Peristaltic movements they pass the urine from kidneys to urinary bladder through this ureters. The question is what is the length of the human ureter? What is the length approximately? How long it is? Right? Is it 10 centimeter, 20 centimeter, 30 centimeter or 40 centimeter? Do you know the answer? The answer is 30 centimeters. So the length of human ureter is 30 centimeters. Right? So let us move to the next question. This is the next question. How much urine will be excreted by a person in a day? So what is the volume of urine that is excreted by a person in a day? There is a specific volume in an ordinary person, average person. So here the person who drinks good quantity of water. So the amount of urine excreted is dependent is based on the amount of water we drink. If a person drinks very less water, he cannot excrete more water, more urine. It is not possible. Right? So we know that every day we need to drink at least 3 liters of water a day. But here the question is how much urine is excreted? So in a normal person who drinks enough water, who get uh, properly hydrated, so in such cases we see that how much urine is excreted. Any guess? 1 liter, 1.5 liter, 1.8 liter, 2 liter, 2.5 liter. So it is around in these values. It is approximately 1800 ml. It is approximately 1800 ml of urine is excreted per day. Right? So once the urine is formed in the kidneys, it is passed to the urinary bladder and it is stored. Do you know what is the storage capacity of urinary bladder? So the urinary bladder, it holds the urine up to 300 to 400 ml. Once it reaches the threshold limit like 300 to 400 ml, the receptors, the stretch receptors present in the urinary bladder, these receptors, they create an urge for urination. So then, then we will vacate the bladder. But sometimes it is not possible to vacate the bladder. Sometimes it is not possible to go and urinate. So in such cases we need to hold down the urine in the bladder. How much urine it can hold up to maximum? What is the maximum limit of urinary bladder? It can hold up to 700 to 800 ml of urine. That is the maximum limit that it can hold. Okay. So here the question how much urine will be excreted by a person in a day is around 1800 ml. Let us go to the next question. So let us see the next question. 
which compound gives the light yellow color to the urine so urine has a specific color what is the color of it pale yellow color so the color of the urine is due to the presence of some substance here the question is what is that substance due to which substance it gets that light yellow color so urine it consists of water and so many minerals and so many things that are filtered from the blood but definitely it contains some particular compound which gives that specific color so from where this compound comes from what is the source so do you know what is that compound do you know the answer yes it is because of a pigment called urochrome it is urochrome so due to the presence of urochrome urochrome it possesses that light yellow color but what is the source of this urochrome from where it comes to the urine so urochrome it it comes from a substance called as hemoglobin why you we know what is uh, hemoglobin hemoglobin is a red color pigment that is present in the blood blood in the sense it is present in the red blood cells so the blood is plasma and cells in that red blood cells and white blood cells are there so in the red blood cells we find the pigment hemoglobin so the red blood cells they have got a specific life span they live for a specific life time 120 days once they complete their life span life time red blood cells they get destroyed where do they get destroyed they get destroyed in the spleen and in the liver so when they get destroyed when the red blood cells are destroyed whatever the heme present in the red blood cell that itself get destroyed the heme is also destroyed is broken down into different components when the heme is broken down into different components it forms urochrome from the heme iron is separated and it is kept there for the later use to make the new rbc the iron is preserved and it produces other components other pigments and one of that is urochrome so urochrome comes from the destruction of rbc that is breakdown of rbc and hemoglobin that is the source of urochrome this urochrome is filtered in the kidneys along with water and other wastes and uh, minerals urochrome is also filtered it enters the urine and it gives the color so you may get a doubt that why some people urine is in light yellow color and why some people urine is in dark yellow color so what gives these different shades it all depends upon the concentration of urine if a person drinks more water his urine is more diluted diluted urine has got very pale color when a person drinks less water his urine is concentrated concentrated urine has got more pigment so that is the difference so here urochrome is the pigment that gives light yellow color to the urine that is the answer to this question so let's move to the next question so let's see the next question what is the percentage of inorganic components of urine what is the percentage of inorganic components so if we see the composition of urine what does it contains urine contains water the primary constituent of urine is water majority so along with the water it has got organic substances inorganic substances here the question is what is the percentage of inorganic components of the urine if you see the composition of urine percentage wise in urine we have 96 percentage of water so in 100 ml 96 ml is that water so in 100 percent 96 percent is is water and remaining the 4 percent the organic and inorganic constituents so in that what is the percentage of organic constituents it is 2.5% 2.5% is the organic constituent so 96 only 4% left 96% water in the 4% 2.5% is organic constituent and what is the remaining percent 1.5 so 1.5% is the answer what is the percentage of inorganic components of urine 1.5% so what are the organic constituents of urine urine may contain little amount of glucose little amount of glucose little amount of vitamins and these are the organic components and inorganic part if you see sulfates 
phosphates. So these kind of salts, inorganic salts are present in the urine. So the composition of inorganic salts is 1.5 percent. Cut. Let us see the next question. What is the condition in which water and toxic wastes are accumulated in the body? So there is a condition in which water and wastes are accumulated in the body. When they are accumulated, when kidneys are not functioning properly. Because that is the function of the kidneys to remove excess water from the body, excess wastes from the body. But if the kidneys fail to do that, if they are not functioning properly, if there is an infection in the kidney, if there is a damage to the tissue in the kidney, in such cases they stop functioning, it leads to accumulation of water and toxic, toxic substances in the body. What is that condition called as? What is the name of that condition? It is called as uremia. What is that? Uremia. So, the levels of urea and other substances increases in the blood and in the body tissues. right? So, that is called uremia. So, when this uremia happens, when the kidneys fail, in the end stage renal disease, ESRD, in the end stage, end stage renal disease, the kidneys, they stop functioning almost. So, the blood is not purified, cleared out of the toxins and uh, excess fluids. So, these fluids and wastes, they get accumulated in the blood and body tissues. Then what is the solution for this? So, there is a treatment called dialysis in which the blood is purified or filtered outside the body. So, the blood is taken to the dialyzing machine and it is purified and again it is injected into the body. So, by this dialysis they do that. People suffering from this condition uremia are, so they given the dialysis, dialysis treatment. So, by that the blood is purified, right. So, that is uremia. Let us see the next question. Name the substance that is added to the blood to prevent coagulation of blood during dialysis. So, during dialysis, in the previous question I discussed, I told that how the dialysis process is done. The blood from a person is taken out through a pipe and it is taken to a dialyzing machine. So, in the dialyzing machine, it contains some dialyzing fluid. So, this blood is filtered and all the waste, toxic waste are absorbed into the dialyzing fluid and the blood again it is injected into the person's body use, through the major vein. So, the blood is drawn from an artery and it is again sent back into the body through a vein. So, in this process, the blood is taken out of the body, from the body, it is taken to some machine. So, there is a chance of clotting in the machine because when the blood is in our body, when it is in the circulatory system, when it is getting circulated, then the chances of clotting are very less because we have some natural substances in the blood that prevent the clotting of blood within the body. So, there is no clotting of blood within the body generally. But whereas when the blood is taken out, there is a chance of clotting. So, to avoid that clotting, some substance is added to the blood during this dialysis procedure. What is that substance? That is the question. So, what is that substance? Do you have any idea? Yes, it is heparin. Heparin is the substance that is added to the blood. When the blood is drawn out of the body through an artery, then the heparin is added. So, it will prevent the clotting of blood in the tubes. It is an anticoagulant. So, anticoagulants are used to stop the blood from clotting. So, heparin is an anticoagulant. So, this heparin keeps the blood, it prevents the blood from clotting and once the dia dialysis is done, the blood again it flows back into the body. So, the answer is heparin. Let us see the next question. When was the first kidney transplant operation was done? So, kidney transplantation. So, actually what is this kidney transpl uh, transplantation? So, we learned that when the kidneys fail, you call it as ESRD, end stage renal disease. So, the kidneys are almost, they are failed, they are not functioning. In such cases, what are the options for the patient to survive? He has two options. One is to take dialysis and second is to take the kidney transplant. So, kidney transplantation is a permanent solution. It gives more life. Dialysis is a very tempor temporary solution. So, time to time they need to visit the dialyzing center and it is expensive and they need to spend more time and there are more problems also with that. So, it is a temporary one. But the permanent solution is kidney, kidney transplant. But kidney transplantation is also not that easy because they need to find a donor. So, the donor should match with the recipient. 
that blood groups and all otherwise if the kidney is transplanted if this persons the recipient's body is not accepting the foreign organ there will be a rejection and the operation gets failed so there should be a matching there should be an acceptance and donors are also very less so that is the reason for these kind of transplantation organ transplantation they will choose the close relatives blood relatives so by that the body may not reject it there will be more resemblance in their uh, dna and all so that is the reason so usually kidneys are used to be taken from a live person but now they are taking the kidneys from people who died with brain dead brain dead cases also they are collecting the organs if they are donating those organs are getting transplanted so that is about the kidney transplantation but here the question is when was the first kidney transplant operation was done in india so if you know the answer please write it in the comment box i'm not giving the answer so these are all the different questions important questions about the topic excretion and if you want to see the full lesson explanation click the link in the description and the part 1 video link is also given in the description if you like the video like it please share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel press the bell icon to get the latest updates so we'll meet again in the next video with another chapter